Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Celery juice is so amazing. Um, I literally drank it for one day and here I am up way, way, way earlier than I normally am. And I've been up for hours. Like I just woke up on my own. <laughs> Thank you, Celery Juice and Angelic Guides. <laughs> so, good morning. Um, we're going to hang out with the trees today. And um, we've been hanging out with a very special tree all week. Our herb of the week is Hawthorne. So I just want to go through this stack of cards real quick and just uh, take a minute to appreciate them because the week flies by. I don't know about you, but like, are you, are you actually, do you know that it's Thursday already? <laughs> here it goes. Here, here, another one goes another week flying by. It's just nuts. Um, so yeah, like I just almost feel like the week has cruised by so much. And like, I'm like, did I give Hawthorne enough attention? Did I give St. John's Wort enough attention last week? The week before that time, did I give it enough time? I haven't given it any time. It's like I'm trying, I'm supposed to be doing a nerdy podcast for it for Herbal Marie. Haven't really done anything. Haven't really done anything. So I don't really know what's going to happen for St. John's Wort and Hawthorne. I almost feel like at this point in my life, I might just need to like put them like back in the, in the filing system and maybe next year do them. Do you know what I mean? Like, just start fresh next week when we do... Do you want to know what we're going to do next week? Hops. <laughs> next week we get to do hops. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just feel like we could just, uh, I don't know, push pause on life. So Hawthorne was all about having courage, healing your heart balancing energies just like every single herb I feel like every single herb um, wants us to heal and wants us to balance our masculine and feminine energies so that's the the first card I'm looking at the tree angels um, they're just so awesome like overlapping their hands to cup around this hawthorn flower um, hawthorn flowers we can use berries and the leaves it's hawthorn medicine uh, for the heart on all levels right um, overcoming our fears fac facilitating self-love and self-acceptance so yeah it's just interesting that like um as hawthorn is talking about courage and overcoming fears i have that absolutely uh funny but personally horrific snake experience and and it, it was just a passing moment, but of course I've held on to it and I've fed so much energy into it, it's not even funny. And this morning, um, when I'm standing in the kitchen and you know talking to my guides in my head, I was like, you guys, you really need to help me to get a hold of my headspace because I am just basically thinking about stupid shit all the time and I just feel like I could be doing something better. <laughs> So um, I'm glad I've gotten to that point. There's hope, right? That, that gives me some hope. That's what we manifested more of yesterday, more hope. That was an okay podcast. Um, so yeah, we've got all these interesting Hawthorne um, cards, a lot of lore. Go, Hawthorne goes way, way back. Um, we had this card with the wolves chase. Not, they are, the wolves actually weren't chasing the guy in this one card that we talked about he heard the wolves coming and because he could foresee confrontation he made this smart intelligent decision to hide from the wolves yes his sword is ready to fight if needed but he thought 
you know what, the easiest way to overcome this obstacle is to avoid it. So we're getting lots of obstacles in our life. Um, in Pennsylvania, they just, I guess the governor just issued like a mandatory, you gotta wear your face mask thing. And it just evokes the Patriot in me so hard. Like, are you fucking kidding me? The weekend before the 4th of July, you're telling me what to do in the land of the free. Like, I just feel like the irony is so thick. I almost cannot tolerate it. <laughs> so it's like, do I have to draw my sword? Is, is this our cue to rebel? Because I'm just like sick and tired of um, this COVID saga that now in July, uh, it's just being perpetuated for political purposes. I'm pretty sure. And you know what? If it's that pervasive on the planet, then let everybody get the goddamn virus and let's move on with life. I'm just, it's bullshit. And it's like, I, I'm feeling that guy. So anyways, but Hawthorne is all about <laughs> stimulating our capacity to love. Okay. So the lover's card, heart healing, um, you know, Hawthorne is like, does that make you feel harmonious and inspired? Not really. So it's like, I don't know, there's just a lot of, a lot of interesting um, energy coming in with Hawthorne. And I want to talk about it today because today we're hanging out with the trees. We're going to ask the trees what they want to talk about. But I've got all the Hawthorne cards out of the deck. So we're not getting a message from Hawthorne with our tree. So I was like, you know what though? We got to talk about it. So protection, healing, gateways, sacred spaces. That was all about Hawthorne, six of wands, um, hearts home, us wanting to connect with nature, feeling inspired, um, really getting our witchiness on our harmonious witchiness and expanding our mind and intelligently leading with our hearts, opening our inner gateways and connecting with love within. So there was just so many um, incredible messages this week with Hawthorne. We still have one more day with Hawthorne, but it's like, I just wanna really take a minute to just shout out this incredible herb of the week. So let's do our affirmations and then um, I'll get out the deck, the tree decks, shuffle them up, Ask the trees, what do you want to talk about today? And see what insight we get from our tree guides this week. All right, Hawthorne, your turn and go. This affirmation minute is brought to you by our massively important herb of the week, Hawthorne. And I dedicate them all to you. Thank you. I am healing my heart. I rise to challenges and overcome obstacles. I open my inner gateways and connect with love within. I expand my mind and intelligently lead with my heart. I feel protected and stimulate my capacity to love. I am inspired harmonious and full of hope. I am healing my heart. I rise to challenges and overcome obstacles. I open my inner gateways and connect with love within. I expand my mind and intelligently lead with my heart. I feel protected and stimulate my capacity to love. I am inspired, harmonious, and full of hope. So be it. It's been a very quiet and peaceful morning here. Like it, it, you quickly remember what you liked about the morning hours when you get up early and hear the morning birds and just, you know, the neighborhood's quiet and... Every, everything's really kind of fun and fresh. And I, I've been up so early, I've had a hoodie on because it's been chilly. So um, I was like, wow, I'm up so early, I'm cold. Um, so anyways, I love it. I love it though. Burn some 
incense, some nag champa, and then I think some patchouli incense for in the basement, sprayed some essential oils, did a load of laundry, drank my yesterday celery juice. Like I made so much yesterday, I just saved half for this morning. And then I drank coffee and then I had to sit on the toilet. <laughs> like, like saying to myself, oh, celery juice and coffee, that this was a good idea. All right, so what do the trees want to talk a bit about today? Certainly not my bowel movement, right? <laughs> um, what other shit can I tell you about? Well, um, I've been doing ch live streams, live check-ins on my YouTube channel. And like yesterday was the fourth one, yesterday evening. And guess what? It did not upload Every once in a while, YouTube glitches out and screws me over on my live stream. And it's too bad because yesterday was the most interesting one and it's not uploading. So anyways, I guess that's a good reminder for us never to get too attached to anything. And just like you can have a great phone conversation with somebody and at the end of it be like, oh my gosh, I wish I had recorded that phone call that was so amazing I think that all the time with my best friend Osseo the Oracle like we'll pull cards for each other and bring in these incredible messages from spirit and uh, at the end of it I'm like oh my gosh like if I could go back in time <laughs> I would I would record that phone call because that was impressive but you know what you just have to enjoy the fleeting moments and you can't sometimes you just cannot document everything and if you and if I did really want to I could screen record I guess if I was worried about it but usually YouTube works good but just every once in a while um, if something gets kind of screwy it, it doesn't upload correctly and I was like well what happened well about midway to the end of the live stream my mom did call me so maybe that was like it got interrupted and then even though the live stream continued to work, it did not save properly. I have no idea. I don't I don't know why this stuff happens. <laughs> but anyways, I am doing live check-ins on my YouTube channel, Sadie Marie Cherico, and um, I'm thinking like Saturday evenings, I might do a live stream where I pull cards for people, for the, for the four people that join me. That's enough though. But if you'd like some cards, think about think about coming over to YouTube and hanging out with me there. Um, there's a lot of young folk that visit my YouTube channel. So, I, you know, it's interesting. I don't swear on my YouTube channel. I mean, I use my best ability to censor the words coming out of my mouth because um, I know there's always somebody young listening in on YouTube. So I do try... I'm trying to get those young folks out of my YouTube channel. <laughs> like, hey kids, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, but uh, it's hard to. It is hard. Because yeah, I'm trying to like get them out so I can upload my Herb Oracle podcast on my YouTube channel. I think that might be kind of fun. Alright, so I've been shuffling. The trees are like, that's enough talky talk. Um, and one card spits itself out. Oh, this is perfect. This is 100% perfect. Intention. We got the intention tree. I don't think we ever got this tree before. It is really cool. Um, so it kind of looks like we're a little bit far away from the tree. And it's just kind of like a smaller tree trunk, you know, and, and it goes up. And it's not really tall. The trunk is not really long. And then all of a sudden, the trunk splits and then splits again and splits again. So it's like a short, stubby, solid trunk, but then the tree splits in half and then in half again. And it kind of, you know, it does its thing. It's got some green leaves in it. And you can see under, you can see where the ground, the ground is. And she, illustrates the roots not the deepest root system but you know they're getting started so this intention tree I feel like <clears throat> the trees are saying 
did you take time to set your intentions today? Like any intentions, is this, what, what are you gonna do with your day? Because the day is going to have its way with you if you don't set your intentions to lead the way. Either you have your way with the day or the day is gonna have its way with you. So set your intentions or else someone else will be setting them for you. So you need to decide what you're gonna do with this day or else someone else <laughs> will let you know. Now on the bottom of the deck is love and on the top of the deck is renewal. So um, I think we should definitely honor those two cards. The love tree is very red and then it does have a little green up at the top. And the renewal tree is yellow with a little, with, that also has a little green at the top. So they're really, oh my God, I just thought of something. So it's like we got a yellow tree, a red tree and a violet tree. And even though those aren't exactly the perfect colors, the way I have them, it reminded me of the tri flame in our hearts. Like there is a, like a lot of times, like the trifold flame is depicted um, as the energy that comes from our hearts. So anyways, I just saw these trees these colors intertwining with each other. Now the love tree bark looks kind of intertwined. Like it's, it's not, it's not like just one solid chunk. It's very like this tree has split apart, but yet intertwined together. The renewal tree, it's a little bit split and intertwiny too. So I feel like there's a great message for us to sort of pull in our energy cords, intertwine them, weave everything with love, weave love through our intentions. Let our intentions be love and let us weave and intertwine love through everything that we intend to do and what we are doing and let that renew us. Like if we are just kind of feeling sluggish or drab or like what this is the point, right? We kind of talked about that yesterday with hope. Like when you get to that point of being like, what is the point of all this? Cause I just want to give up, right? It's like, let love renew you. Let love remind you, renew you and intend you, right? Like let love be your intentions. Like today, like hope said yesterday, I am going to look for rainbows. I am going to look for the good. I'm going to look for love. I'm going to let love be my intention. I'm going to really, really, really focus and have goals to feel good and loving and lovable and renew myself with this energy. Renew myself with this kindness in my heart and this love in my heart. And it's like, you know what? I got a lot of stuff I could get done today on my to-do list, but can I put love at the top of that list? Can I put feeling good and feeling love up there for me? You know what I wanna do? I wanna, I wanna get out um, this deck that, that I think has a little write-up on the trifold um, flame because I feel like personally I need to be reminded what that the message is with that since I so clearly saw that jump up from these cards and I felt like that would be silly of me to ignore that sign okay let me grab the Magdalene Oracle all right so this is um, the Magdalene Oracle by Sharanda and Kumara and uh, there's a card in it called Lady Venus and the threefold flame of the heart. And I'll just skip to the part where it talks about, in this painting, Lady Venus has a threefold flame shown over her heart. And she has this imagery in other cards too, like the twin flame card and 
yeah, like she's she's inter interwoven this um it's like red, yellow, and blue. So like I kind of got it off like it's not the intention tree is actually violet and <laughs> dark violet, but it totally the red and the yellow and yeah, that violet triggered my blue memory. It made me remind me of this so much. Okay. So the threefold flame, that's what it's called. The threefold flame of the heart represents love. So that's also funny that we pulled the love tree and the trees want to talk about intentions of love. So the the threefold flame, the the pink the pink color represents love. The yellow color, the yellow flame represents power and the blue flame represents wisdom. So it's love, power, and wisdom. Every human being has a divine sacred flame, a spark of God within their heart. Expand your divine heart flame. You are a passionate flame of God, pure and innocent, magnificent, and divine. So that's the three fold flame of the heart yet yeah, the pink the pink red flame um, pink flame represents love yellow flame power and blue flame wisdom so I mean I think she probably goes into this like more in other other cards too but it's something to maybe look up um, especially if you keep seeing that imagery like if you keep seeing this intertwined pink, yellow, blue thing, or pink, red, yellow, bluish thing. Look up the threefold flame of the heart. Okay, little distraction there. <laughs> little distraction there. Um, but I love that deck. Okay, so what do the trees want to talk about today? Making intentions of love. Making, or maybe just even making better intentions, right? It's like, who here, did anybody make intentions? Did anybody take the time to even make intentions for the day, for the week, for your life? Like, seriously, either you have the day or the day will have you. It's true. All right, so, whoa, another spitter, another flyer outer. I didn't even get to say that I'm shuffling the wisdom of the trees oracle and a card spits out and it's Scott's pine and it is reversed so I'll just honor that this is a winter scene there's a woodpecker on a tree and far away there is a house now on the top there's holly another winter scene and on the bottom there's white mulberry with a yin yang uh, being woven into a fabric. So there's like a weaving thing, a weaving thing. Ooh, which is interesting because I thought that these, that the love tree um, bark was woven, weaving. And when I think of the, the threefold flame, it weaves and spirals and goes around each other, right? Think of like DNA, how like it kind of spirals with in itself, um, that's kind of um, what the threefold flame looks like too. How a tree, if the trunk does split, or you know, it sort of will then coil around itself um, as it grows upward toward the light. And, and white mulberry, isn't that kind of like a winter, like um, dried berry, like kind of. So, anyways, we have like definite like. Um, winter vibes now here with um, the wisdom of the trees. Uh, Scott's pine, holly, and white mulberry. So let's see what else the trees want to say as we think about making intentions of love, you know, as we intend for the months to come. I was hanging out with my friend Charity yesterday. We had a play date together 
and um, and man, it was so quiet at her house. She lives in the woods, in the forest, and there is a road, so every once in a while, like, cars would zoom by, but for the most part, it was silent. There was no neighbors mowing, weed whacking, yelling like banshees in their swimming pool. It was so nice, and being in the woods, it's like 15, 20 degrees cooler. Like it just it was it was it was nice to sit out on her porch and let the kids play and you know just hang out for a bit. But anyways, she was saying how she feels like it's gonna be an early fall. She's like it's July and it already feels like fall. <laughs> so that's just kind of interesting that we got some winter vibes here too because I was telling her like she's I was like I know what you're saying because like I already am like upset that we're gonna have winter again already like I just feel like it's here like it's July and it could be December emotionally <laughs> you know so it's like um we kind of are already either looking too far ahead of us or we feel time speeding up or it is gonna you know the season the summer season is gonna be kind of short but um yeah, so what are our intentions going to be like? What what do we need to do for all of that? So Scott's Pine is all about construction. It came in inversed, upside down, reversed, and it says, Is your life cluttered with too many commitments or possessions? And that's funny because we've been talking about decluttering our minds and our energy fields and um and charity and i of course talked about that yesterday because we always do <laughs> she, she's perpetually um in a state of wanting to declutter her life and um you know she's a little bit challenged there because her husband's always bringing home crap <laughs> are you holding on to them either your commitments or your possessions because you truly need them or because they are familiar and you are unwilling to discard them. Perhaps it is time to let some of them go. So this is right under the intention tree. So it's like, what can you let go of? How can you simplify your life? What can you clean up? What commitments can you just say, no thank you, or I'll pass, and... Uh, and uh, evaluate, self-evaluate yourself there. Now, Holly, Holly says, where are you at, Holly? There's white mulberry. Maybe we'll do that one first since I can't seem to find the ho White mulberry is all about harmony and Holly is all about truth. Ooh, so what kind of intentions could we make? Yeah, simplify our life, get rid of everything unnecessary, but then really make some beautiful, loving intentions of harmony and truth. Okay, so Holly says, do not let yourself confuse fact with fiction or rational thought with wishful thinking. Right, wish in one hand and... <laughs> shit in the other so don't confuse fact with fiction or rational thought with wishful thinking this is not a good time to indulge in fantasies and idle dreams listen to your conscience conscience as it guides you toward honesty and truthfulness and White Mulberry says, find the connections between you and the people and animals with whom you share your life, even the snakes. Do your best to create harmony with them and to empathize with them even when their behavior perplexes you. So, interesting combo there when I read them back to back together. It's like harmonize, empathize, um, try to understand everybody, you know, but be rational, be rational. You don't need, you don't, and be honest and be truthful. And it's like, see things for what they are, perhaps, you know, um, and then make your intentions accordingly and then declutter and downsize accordingly. I guess pretty straightforward there. <laughs> 
So let's talk to the devas for a sec. Holly Deva says, with my sharp edged leaves and scarlet berries, I am one of the most easily recognized trees in the forest. I have powerful associations with spirituality and I represent the truth. Let me support you in your own quest for veracity. So it's like, if you want to make intentions of love and truth and honesty, Holly will support you on that. And the white mulberry deva says, I will send you spiritual and emotional nourishment. This will guide you into creating a stronger and more harmonious connection with others and enrich your understanding of their motives as well as yours. So it's like it is time, you know, if, if we are going to keep people in our life, okay, let's just say, you, okay, if you're going to keep people in your life, then you need to enrich those connections, right? No more fake friends, no more wastes of time, no more, no more interactions that just make you feel like, ugh, what an energy vampire. It's like keep people that you need and want in your life and then make your do your part, make your effort to connect with them, enrich your your relationship. Like if you are gonna have people in your life, make it good. Understand them, empath, empathize, help them, um, and invest in being harmonious with them. Now the Deva from the Scots Pine says my straight trunk has been valued for thousands of years for building ships and homes. I thrive even in foul weather and harsh conditions. Let me show you how to construct a richer and healthier life for yourself. So yeah, that is the message from the trees. It's like, you gotta stop. You got to stop living this life that you don't actually enjoy. You got to stop being around people that you don't really love. It's like, let the trees show you how to construct a life that you love, that you enjoy, that supports you and renews you and, and uh, also helps support and renew others as well. So what does that include? Yeah decluttering your life, getting rid of the commitments, the possessions, and the people that you don't want to invest in anymore. And the ones that you do keep around, you need to add good energy into. The stuff that you do keep around, you should love and appreciate. Your commitments that you do keep around, they should be worthwhile. They should be something that you enjoy and that you want to do. I mean, dang, trees, it's a good question. What is worthwhile in your life? What's worth keeping? Who's worth investing in? What commitments do you enjoy? What type of things in your life give you that feeling of love and renew your spirit? And it's like that you want to make intentions for. What people in your life do, who you, do you actually really want to see? Right? And... Who are you just tolerating? I mean, it seems harsh in a way, but then at the same time, it's like, well, it's your life. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know? um, so like white mulberry, you know, with that tapestry of the yin yang, you know, the yin yang or yin yang or however the, however the heck you want to say it. It's like, it is all about balance and integrating our life. And what do you want to be weaving in, right? We want to weave love into everything that we do. That is our main intention. And I get that, but it's like, what else do you want in your tapestry of life? Who do you want? What commitments? What activities? What kind of stuff? Like, it's your house. Do you want all that stuff in there or not? It's up to you, you know? Nobody's, nobody's telling you what to do. Except that you have to wear a mask. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, so anyways, 
but it is your life, you know, and theoretically, <laughs> you're a free sovereign being, not even theoretically, you are, you are. So what is it that you want to invest in? What is it that you want to do? All right, let's end with a Celtic tree. Let's just keep this, this hangout short and sweet. And um, when we're done with this podcast, I think it's a really good idea to sit down and write down your intentions because either you have your way with the day or the day is going to have its way with you. So you've got to stay focused and, you know, deliberate in your intending, you know. And, and Abraham Hicks has a technique called segment intending. And they say, like, before you go into any situation, a phone call, an interaction, walk into a store, before you do the dishes, like, whatever it is you're doing, like, right before you take a few seconds and segment intend intend in your mind how you'd like it to go state your intentions to the universe you know before the phone conversation like i intend for this to be a loving conversation for me to check in with this person that i care about and it's going to go so well like you kind of just do this in your head but it's like take more time to start writing the script for yourself like okay i gotta go in here to the DMV and do this paperwork, right? Um, and intend that it's gonna go smoothly and you know, your your transactions gonna go through and your YouTube video is gonna upload and you know, your money that you're sending to your mom in the Ukraine is gonna go through and you know, like just whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> that was my friend Marta yesterday. I talked to her too. I had a conversation with her last night Marta's cakes and cookies check her out she's a cake artist but anyways you know her um, money that she was uh what it what's that when you wire somebody you send money what's that company called anyways they're just you know something's held up and not going through and she's like god like what was what's the hold up was I too generous with my mom like, <laughs> like what is the problem here so yeah, more intentions that everything's going to go good and smooth and loving and worthwhile and you know, we're going to feel like that was a good choice and worth our time. Yada yada yada. So, Celtic tree oracle. Give us a Celtic tree to go with this intention, renewal and love vibe, this trifold flame that we've got ready to enter interweave and intertwine with each other and I love that the whoa okay no denying no den no dang it are you reversed all right <laughs> no denying that that card wanted me to see it it is number nine the hazel but I feel like it is reversed now what is amazingly cool like to the point that I am impressed is the bud the bud on the blossoming bud on this um, little segment of branch and then the leaf is in the background it's literally the trifold flame color there is yellow and there there is um, purple and pinks and white like all of the colors that's in the renewal tree and the intention tree and the love tree it's like this ombre like uh different like it's like stage lighting on this bud i shit you not i'm not even joking you it's so pretty i will i will be sure to take a picture of it and put it on herb oracle so there is definitely this vibe that we've got to integrate and weave and intertwine these energies that we want to infuse in our life that we are going to intend to infuse in our life and what are they love and renewal love and renewal so when you do start to get rid of the excess clutter in your life and the the meaningless commitments and the energy vampires and just you know, it's like sometimes you got to be honest, man, you are just hanging out with people because you think you have to. Maybe you're related to them. 
but it's like every time you hang out with them or talk to them or interact with them, you feel like garbage because all they're sending at you is trash vibes or you've just outgrown them, but yet out of obligation, you gotta you keep going around them. And it's like when, when you start limiting your exposure and just start focusing your energy on what you want to manifest, you feel better. You feel lighted. You feel more love. And then, you know, maybe whenever you see them again sometime, you're in a better energetic place to deal with them or you're happier now so they don't seem so bad. I don't know, right? Like sometimes you got to separate and break away and give yourself some space like that little wood, that little house on Scott's Pine that's nestled down into the forest. There's, it's snow everywhere. There's no path, hardly. <laughs> like there is, but most people are not going to make the effort to go to your house. <laughs> so you got your time alone. It's like you take that time to renew your spirit and then you get, you get more of that shining light holly with that lighted candle right underneath the yellow renewal tree you kind of you can shine your light brighter because you're paring down you're focusing your energy you're taking away the zappers you've decluttered you're not running around over committing yourself to stuff that you don't believe in or doesn't make you feel good or doesn't seem worthwhile so it's like this hazel bud She's stepping into the light now, the stage light, the limelight. These energies of intention and love and renewal have intertwined now and are coming out, pointing. She's pointing this energy out and sharing it. Now, it is reversed, so that might be interesting to see what Hazel reversed. Number nine. So number nine, what does that tell you? Number nine is the number of completion. So it's like a lot of this stuff in your life, the trees are saying, it's done, it's over. You, you've completed this. These phases need to be wrapped up. These loose ends need to be tied. You know, not you don't have to keep on doing everything forever. Some stuff needs to come to an end because you're finished with it now. And that's okay. It's okay to be done with stuff. So the key words for Hazel are water, the moon, bounty and abundance, intuition, wisdom, right? That's one of the threefold power, wisdom, and love, right? Um, wisdom, insight, knowledge, sage advice, divination, poetry, creative pursuits, higher perspective and clarity. So yeah, once you pare down, you have more energy to put towards your creative pursuits. <laughs> you'll have more time to write poetry. <laughs> um, you'll have more time to tap into your intuition and your insight. And you kind of get a higher perspective when you are able now to call back and have a lot of your energy returned to you. So the hazel is all about the, actually the time that we're in right now, the summer solstice. The totems are the hare, the scar scarab, that beetle, the tortoise and turtles, the crab, salmon. The deities and guides are Gaia and the great mother and goddesses like Sophia and Isis. In Fintan, the white, the white ancient one. So here we give our gratitude for the abundance of Mother Earth. Hazel is about compassion and love for our friends and families, as well as safety and protection, which are important aspects of mothering and nurturing. Hazel supports our emotional life. She honors the moon and the waters of our planet. She supports creative expression in the form of story, poetry, art, song, and dance. Hazel brings clarity when we seek advice. 
So it did come in reversed and we did start off this um, tree guide podcast with the trees asking us, did you make intentions for the day? Did you even make intentions for the day? <laughs> and now we end with Hazel saying, are you ignoring your intuitive knowing? Are you ignoring your intuitive knowing? It's like, you know you feel like garbage doing this stuff that you don't care about. Why are you ignoring your intuition? Why are you ignoring that? Perhaps you don't like what you are sensing as change is indicated. Even so, it is time to pay attention to wisdom that is offered you. Are you resistant to advice? So it's like, why, why, not even why, but are you ignoring like these obvious signs that it's time to complete and end a few things? Are you? Are you cut off from other women? Are you cut off from the mothers in your life? Perhaps it is time to heal a mother wounding. Perhaps you are cut off from your family or your connection to Mother Earth. How do you mother yourself? It is time to cease repeating habitual negative messages to yourself. It's time to stop the negative thoughts in your mind. Instead, begin giving yourself the nurturing you require. So it's kind of interesting because it's like on one hand, it's like the trees are saying, you know, to maybe let go of a few relationships that aren't doing so good. But it's like, are you just completely cut off from everyone and everything and mother energy and women energy? I mean, it's up to you. Only you know whether or not you're supposed to be connected to your family. But that is the a good message. It's like... If you want them in your life, you have to nurture that, right? Just like the trees are now saying, you need to nurture yourself too. You need to give yourself the nurturing you require, right? You need to fill yourself up with love. Renew your spirit because you are investing in yourself and you're giving yourself love. Then after you do that, Offer this to others as well. Too much criticism separates us from ourselves and others. So too much criticism. Like um, my friend Charity was saying like the, how she just hates going to her family functions because some of the people there are just so critical of her kids. And they're just, you know, people don't even realize sometimes um, the, just how negative and destructive criticism can be. Too much criticism separates us from ourselves and others. So if we're too critical of ourself, you know, we're not letting ourselves get into that space of being nurturing and loving and supportive of ourselves. If we're just cutting ourselves down and criticizing and it separates us from ourselves and then yeah it separates us from other people and when we're critical of them it separates us even farther and then if they're critical to us it's like get away from me right you just don't want to be around that um, so this is a definite message from the trees today to intend to have more love within yourself and within all of your relationships so that you can start to be more creative. So Hazel wants to also say, perhaps you are experiencing a creative block. Is it time to learn new skills? Would it help you to work with others to overcome creative obstacles? If so, look to your community. Or it may be that you feel st stemmied stymied s-t-y-m-i-e-d stymed i have no idea what that word is i've never seen it before in my life 
I feel like it means blocked or stunted in your pursuits and goals because you are not heeding your intuition. So it's like tap into your intuition, make intentions to um, overcome obstacles. That's what Hawthorne wants to tell us, you know, to um, look to your community for support with that. And if you do feel like you know, you're not heeding your intuition and it's holding you back from your pursuits and your goals and your intentions, go within and reconnect with your own inner knowing. Go within and reconnect with your own inner knowing. So I would say there's a good chance that we're not listening to our own inner intention and that we do need to go within and listen for our inner knowing. Uh, the Hazel Reverse card is right under the Scott's Pine reversed. And the Scott's Pine has that winter scene. And winter, to me, always is that time for slowing down and going within in reflection. So it's like kind of make, make your winter practice something that you do every day of the year of, you know, just having a little a little time to quiet down and be still. So Hazel wants to wrap up our, our uh, tree guide message here of, of having in the intentions of love with a little, a little special, a little special message. <laughs> All right, here we go. I represent your own inner wisdom. I am that small but still voice inside that is sometimes hard to hear. I stand up for the heart wisdom that ensures life and health for you, your situations, and your mother planet. You'll find me speaking in a babbling brook or a dense forest. You'll find me in the fullness of the summer sun. I am part of the paradise in which you live. I produce the hazelnut of wisdom and ancient knowledge. Please Take care of me and of yourself and the children of this world. I am the birth of your own dreams and visions. Now is a good time to use your divination tools. It is also a great time to support others and act as a guide or helper. Very interesting. So it's like the trees want to say to us, make intentions for love, renewal, um, clearing out what doesn't fit your highest goals in your life and the highest good of the all. Set the example and then lead and guide others <coughs> to do the same thing. <laughs> Choking on a dried blueberry. They're so good though. All right. So anyways, on that note, the trees are saying, now go do your thing, live your life, clean out your cupboards, um, say no to some things, and invest in that which you love. So thank you, Holly. Thank you, Mulberry. Thank you, Scott's Pine. Thank you, Hazel, for just bringing in these definitely beautiful messages of love, wisdom, and our own personal power, making intentions with our day, because either we're going to have the day where the day is going to have its way with us. So let's manifest our dreams and visions. And what do we want? We want love. Mm -hmm.